I'm going to show you a picture of the guy who was designing merch over at Target. Okay, this is Eric Carnell, and he had, well, a line of clothing. I guess, you know, for Target, just mainly onesies and stuff for babies with nice, lovely rainbows on them. All good, right? Except you saw him in that picture. A little weird, right? It turns out he had this whole other line of clothing that he moonlighted on. <laughs> that was his real job, where he was sell selling Satan-inspired stuff. And so it became kind of a big deal. Like, y you can imagine, right? Like, everybody's like, okay, well, what are these onesies? Well, it wasn't just the rainbow onesies that were designed by the guy who was worshiping Satan. He, he says he didn't, by the way. He just, I guess he just sold merchandise that <laughs> worshiped to Satan. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. Um, strange, strange, strange stuff. Anyway, he, he's, he, he's like, oh, you know, like misinformation, whatever. That's, that's the quote of the day. Everybody loves to say misinformation. Well, overall, though, this company kind of like took a weird detour, a detour that was even worse, I would say, than anything else we have seen, even from Bud Light. We're going to get to Bud Light because they just got knocked off their perch. They are no longer the number one beer in America, and we're going to get to that. But when you put out swimsuits that are called Tuck It, Tuck It swimsuits, I mean, I'd never heard of these before. This is not, you guys see this? It's Tuck Friendly. You see? That's Alex Clark. Tuck Friendly. Tuck Friendly. That's Alex Klein who like went into, he's joking around, he went into a Target and like tried on the, the tuck friendly swimsuit. And then of course they had the binders for, for girls. I mean, that's, that's kind of crossing the line, right? I spoke just the other day actually on Monday with Jerry Storch, who's the former vice chairman of Target. You can watch that interview actually here on the channel. And he, you know, he said there are a lot of reasons and we went through all the other reasons why Target's in major trouble right now, but a big part of this right now is like, well, what the heck are you doing? Like, who in your marketing department thought this was a good idea and chose not to actually bring it to the CEO of the company? That would be Brian Cornell. Well, I guess that's uh, this gentleman right here. He was running marketing, Carlos Savidra. This is according to the Daily Mail. He was a head of brand marketing and he was on um, some LGBTQ boards and had sort of a a view, right? A vision of what he wanted his company to be. And that vision included all of this pride merchandise, which again, like they've done it in the past. You could say, okay, well, what's different about this time? Well, this time it was the tuck it thing combined with the binder thing combined with, well, the Satan, whatever thing. <laughs> again, not actually sold in Target. That's just his other line that he's in, you know, off duty hours uh, working on. And, and all of a sudden moms are like, what? Really? I mean, come on. And even Jerry was saying, the vice chairman of Target, in, in a different, you know, he, he's like, this never would have happened if, if I was still there. And it just never would have happened. He said, because you've got to have sort of a chain of command. We would have known that this would be sensitive. And you don't want to alienate so many customers. Like, you have to know that this, when you start talking about genital children's, private parts, then you're going to actually get people very, very upset. And if you can't figure that out, hello, head of marketing, well then really and truly, gosh, I guess you're just absolutely no better than this woman. Well, I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like, we mm -hmm. need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what, is, what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Mm -hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor. And it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach. So well, you got that. And you also knocked 
But right off its perch, it's no longer the number one beer in America. New sales numbers just came out. And what do you know? Bud sales, they're down 23% compared with Modella Especial, which is one of the Constellation brands. And Modella is like killing it. They're up, what, 15, 16% in the same amount of time. So they are now number one. By trying to impose and force your worldview on your customers, your political worldview on your customers, you have just cost your company some $27 billion. Alyssa Heinerschneid, there at Bud Light. It's just remarkable. But you know what I've said before? It's not entirely her fault. It's the whole organization because that CEO at that company, he... And again, we're going to get to this with Target as well. He allowed, he allowed this to to happen. And then, by the way, had no ability to lead through it because we waited a couple of weeks for the company to say anything. And then they came out with some fancy ads and they tried to say, rah, rah, America, patriots, blah, blah, blah. Nobody believed it. He went and did this interview with a foreign paper, the FT, Financial Times out of London. And he said, it's just misinformation because it was just one campaign, just one influencer. Well, you know, apparently that's all it takes. (laughs) Just one time. What do you know? And it really has just decimated the brand, but it shows you how much people care about this stuff and how powerful American consumers really can be.